Law 20. Do not commit to anyone. It is the fool who always rushes to take sides. Do not commit to any side or cause but yourself. By maintaining your independence, you become the master of others, playing people against one another, making them pursue you. The Lion and the Wild Donkey A lion and a wild donkey entered into an agreement to hunt prey together. The lion was to use his great strength, while the donkey would make use of his great endurance. When they had taken a certain number of animals, the lion divided up the spoils into three portions. I'll take the first share, because I am the king, he said. The second share will also be mine, because I have been your partner in the chase. The third share will be mine as well. And by the way, get lost. Almost all of us instinctively understand the importance of allies, however we frequently make the worst kinds of alliances. A common mistake is to think that the more allies we have, the better, but quality is more important than quantity. Having numerous allies increases the chances that we will become entangled in other people's wars. Going to the other extreme, we sometimes think a single powerful ally is all we need, but allies like that tend to get what they want from us and then drop us when our usefulness is exhausted. Finally, we sometimes choose those who seem the friendliest, who we think will be loyal. Our emotions lead us astray. To survive and advance at all in life, we find ourselves constantly having to use other people for some purpose, some need, to obtain resources we cannot get on our own, to give us protection of some sort, to compensate for a skill or a talent we do not possess. As a description of human relationships however, the word use has ugly connotations, and in any case we always like to make our actions seem nobler than they are. We prefer to think of these interactions as relationships of assistance, partnering or friendship. This is the source of dangerous confusion that will harm you in the end. When you look for an ally, you have a need, an interest you want met. This is a practical, strategic matter upon which your success depends. If you allow emotions and appearances to infect the kinds of alliances you form, you are in danger. The art of forming alliances depends on your ability to separate friendship from need. There is no shame in this, no need to ever feel guilty, nor should we take it personally when we realize that someone else is using us. Using people is a human and social necessity. The alliances that will help you most are those involving mutual self-interest. Alliances infected with emotions or with ties of loyalty and friendship are nothing but trouble. Being strategic with your alliances will also keep you from the bad entanglements that are the undoing of so many. We call this constant shifting yet advancing use of allies the alliance game. Many key principles of the alliance game originated in ancient China, which was composed of numerous states in continual flux, now weak, now powerful, now weak again. War was a dangerous affair, for a state that invaded another would stir up a lot of mistrust among the others and would often find itself losing ground in the long run. Meanwhile, a state that remained too loyal to an ally might find itself pulled into a war from which it could not break free and would go down in the process. The formation of proper alliances was in some ways a more important art than that of warfare itself and the statesmen adept at this art were more powerful than the military leaders. 5 Rules for Making Alliances The first one, choose maneuverability over steadfast loyalty. To keep your position of power secure, you must be as fluid as possible. The ally of today might be the enemy of tomorrow. Sentiment has no place in this realm. If you find yourself in a weak position, you can catapult yourself to new heights by bouncing from one crumbling alliance to a stronger one. The opposite approach is to make a key alliance and stick with it, valuing trust and an established relationship. This can work well in stable times, but the world isn't stable. Differences in interest will inevitably emerge. It is safer to bank on change, to keep your options open and your alliances based on need, not loyalty or shared values. Observance of the rule In the golden age of Hollywood, actresses had almost the least amount of power of anyone. Careers were short, even a great star would be replaced in a few years by someone younger. An actress would stay loyal to a studio and then watch helplessly as she was replaced. Joan Crawford decided to play the Alliance game. In 1933, she met the screenwriter Joseph Mankiewicz, then a timid young man just starting out his career. Crawford recognized his talent immediately and went out of her way to befriend him. He went on to write nine screenplays for her, greatly lengthening her career. 
Crawford would often make alliances with up-and-coming young talent who valued a relationship with the star. Then she would gracefully break or forget the connection when it no longer served the needs, nor would she stay loyal to the studio, or indeed anyone, only to herself. Her unsentimental approach to her own shifting network of alliances allowed her to avoid the trap that most actresses found embedded in the system. The second rule. Help another person in some cause or fight, only for the purpose of furthering your own interest in the end. In ancient China, the kingdom of Xin once invaded the kingdom of Xing. Huan, the ruler of a nearby province, thought he should rush to Xing's defense, but his advisor counseled him to wait. Xing is not yet exhausted. If Xing and Xin is not exhausted, we cannot become very influential. He listened to his advisor's advice and waited. Huan later had the glory both of rescuing Xing from the brink of destruction and then of conquering a exhausted Xin. He stayed out of the fighting until the forces had worn each other down, at which point it was safe for him to intervene. That is what holding back from the fray allows you, time to position yourself to take advantage of the situation once one side starts to lose. You can also take the game step further by promising your support to both sides while maneuvering so that the one to come out ahead in the struggle is you. The third rule. A variation of the alliance game is to play the mediator, the center around which other powers pivot. You make those around you fight for your allegiance. You can maintain your power in the central position only by keeping yourself unentangled and courted by all. The moment you enter into any kind of lasting alliance, your power is greatly reduced. Those who use the strategy often notice a strange phenomenon. People who rush to the support of others tend to gain little respect in the process, for their help is easily obtained, while those who stand back find themselves besieged with supplicants. Their aloofness is powerful and everyone wants them on their side. Oftentimes, when a conflict breaks out, you are tempted to side with the stronger party. The one to side with the one that offers the most advantages is a natural instinct, but it is often difficult to foresee which side will prevail in the long run. Even if you guess right and ally yourself with the stronger party, you may find yourself swallowed up or conveniently forgotten when they become victors. Side with the weaker on the other hand and you are doomed, but play a waiting game and you cannot lose. When people rush into situations quickly, committing to one side, maneuverability is lost. You cannot let yourself become the lackey for any cause. If you allow people to feel they possess you to any degree, you will lose power over them. By not committing your affections, they will only try harder to win you over. When you hold yourself back, you incur not anger, but a kind of respect. You instantly seem powerful because you make yourself ungraspable, rather than succumbing to the group or to the relationship as most people do. The fourth rule, a key component of the alliance game is the ability to manipulate other people's alliances and even to destroy them, sowing dissension among your opponents so that they will fight among themselves. Breaking your enemy's alliances is as good as making alliances yourself. When Hernan Cortez landed in Mexico in 1519, he faced hundreds of thousands of Aztecs with 500 men. Knowing that many smaller Mexican tribes resented the powerful Aztec Empire, he slowly worked to peel them away from their allegiances with the Aztecs. By filling a tribal leader's ears with horrible stories about the Aztecs Emperor's plans, he might bait the man into arresting the Aztecs envoys on their next visit. That of course would infuriate the Emperor and now the tribe would be isolated and in danger and would appeal to Cortes for protection. On and on, Cortes went with this negative version of the alliance game until the Aztec allies became his. Your focus here is on stirring up mistrust, make one partner suspicious of the other, spread rumors, cast doubts on people's motives. In facing an enemy that is composed of allies, no matter how large or formidable, do not be afraid, divide and conquer, hitting them first from this side and then from that side, until the alliance crumbles. Now former members of the alliance will feel vulnerable through manipulation or outright invitation. Make them turn to you for protection. The fifth rule, be careful who you ally with. If you play the alliance game, so will those around you. There are some types with whom any kind of alliance will harm you. 
You can often recognize them by their over-eagerness to pursue you. They will make the first move, trying to blind you with alluring offers and glittering promises. To protect yourself from being used in a negative way, always look at the tangible benefits you will gain from this alliance. If the benefits seem vague or hard to realize, think twice about joining forces. Look at your prospective allies past for signs of greed or of using people without giving in return. Be wary of people who speak well, have apparent charming personalities, and talk about friendship, loyalty or selflessness. They are most often con artists trying to prey on your emotions. Keep your eye on the interests involved on both sides and never let yourself be distracted from them. Think of your alliances as stepping stones towards a goal. Over the course of your life, you will be constantly jumping from one stone to the next to suit your needs. When this particular river is crossed, you will leave them behind you. Reversal Finally, you will of course be attacked for playing the alliance game. People will accuse you of being reckless, amoral, treacherous. Remember, these charges are strategic themselves to advance their own interests. Your accusers are trying to make you feel guilty or look bad. Do not let them get to you. The only real danger is that your reputation will eventually keep people from making alliances with you. But self-interest rules the world. If you are seen to have benefited others in the past and as capable of doing the same in the present, you will have suitors and playing partners. Besides, you are loyal and generous as long as there is mutual need. And when you show that you cannot be had by the false lure of permanent loyalty and friendship, you will actually find yourself treated with greater respect. Many will be drawn to your realistic and spirited way of playing the game. Stepping Stones The stream runs fast, but you must cross it at some point. There lie some stones in a haphazard line that can get you to the other side. If you linger too long on one stone, you will lose your balance. If you go too fast, you will slip. Instead, you must jump lightly, gracefully, from one stone to the next and never look back.